To be or not to be? That is the question posed in Shakespeare's famous play, Hamlet. But you might have often found yourself wondering about another type of Hamlet, generally the smallest kind of settlement in Britain, and what exactly differentiates it from a village. We'll wonder no longer. Let's find out what it is that decides whether a settlement gets to be, or not to be, a Hamlet or a village. Through the centuries, there have been many different names for the places settled by people in Great Britain. But nowadays, we generally like to categorise our settlements into four types, those being cities, towns, villages and hamlets. Now you'll more than likely have an intuitive idea of what differentiates these four types of human settlements, usually revolving around size. But the fact of the matter is that size is technically irrelevant when it comes to identifying what is a city, a town, a village or a hamlet. In the modern day, cities are famously granted city status by the British monarch, and that's why some of the country's cities are actually much smaller than its towns. Places like Ripon, home to around 16,000 people, Wells, home to around 12,000, St Asaph, with a population of just over 3,000, and St David's, which is the UK's smallest city, with around 1,500 residents. Towns, traditionally at least, were places that didn't have city status, but were still relatively important in their region, owing to the fact that they had the rights to hold a market. For centuries, market charters were rights granted to towns by the monarch, allowing them to hold markets and fairs, once a vitally important part of everyday life. Although nowadays the definition of a town is less exact, and it usually is based on size, smaller than the city, but larger than a village. In fact, the UK government, which lists all of the country's settlements, draws a line between city and large town, at a population of 175,000 residents while any settlement with a population of less than 7,500 residents is considered to be merely a village. This isn't an official definition, however, as it's purely based on population and ignores city status, and so it acts as more of a convenient, subjective list for the government to use for their own devices. We're more interested in the official differences between these settlements, and in general, Villages were historically differentiated from towns not by population, but rather their lack of a market charter. But what was it that made a village different from a hamlet? Well, despite what you might think, it's not size, but once again status. Now, there's no such thing as village status in the same vein as city status. There are accordingly 6,116 villages around the UK and so the king would be rushed off his feet if he had to be granting them all special village status. What does determine a village's status as a village, however, are two very important buildings, a parish church and a village hall. A village hall, very simply, is a place for the local community to meet and discuss local issues, usually in the form of a parish council, a body of local government that draws its origins from the presence of a parish church. Now, there are churches of many different shapes and sizes all over the UK. In England and Wales, cathedrals, the largest and most significant types of church, are generally the seat of a bishop, who oversees a wider area known as a diocese. For example, Birmingham Cathedral, the seat of the Bishop of Birmingham, being the central church of the Diocese of Birmingham. This religious subdivision is the largest of its kind in the Church of England, but within a diocese, you'll find many more parishes, much smaller subdivisions which have their own central church, known as a parish church. Hamlets, on the other hand, have neither a village hall nor a parish church. These small settlements take their name from the old French word hamelet, simply meaning little village. Despite that, however, hamlets can actually range dramatically in size from populations of just one or two families to those with populations nearing a thousand and even more. Many have makeshift unofficial meeting places as well as places of worship like chapels but without the status and role of a parish church, and this is why they remain hamlets. There are plenty of examples of where this occurs, but a great place to see the difference between hamlets and villages in spite of size is on the famous Cleveland coast in Yorkshire. 
Between the mighty cliffs that dominate this beautiful piece of coastline, you'll find a number of historic fishing settlements turned popular holiday destinations. Robin Hood's Bay and Runswick Bay, just to name a couple. Now historically, both of these settlements were undoubtedly hamlets, isolated places with small settlements of just tens of people, mostly fishing families, who on Sundays had to walk up the cliffs to inland villages like Hinderwell and Filingdales to go to worship, as these places, better defended inland from attackers from the sea, were the site of parish churches. But as these historic fishing hamlets down by the sea have grown in popularity with tourists over the last few decades, they've grown in size considerably, with summertime populations in particular reaching the thousands, far more than those villages on top of the cliffs. But with little space to construct a church or official village hall beneath the cliffs, they technically remain hamlets and not villages. So that's the difference between a hamlet and a village, a town and a city in the UK. But no matter what you call a place, it's certain to have plenty of stories to tell and many things to see. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it an interesting watch.